Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the drum roller shaft on your dryer. If your drum rollers have worn badly, they may have damaged the shaft as well and need to be replaced. But it's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the dryer. So locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuses, or pull the dryer far enough forward that you can unplug it. We'll also need access to the back of this particular style of dryer to remove two screws that secure the top panel off. We'll start by removing these two screws that secure that top panel. And we'll slide that top just back a little bit, we'll disengage it from the back side of the control panel, and we'll just set that aside. Turn the dryer around, we'll go to the front next. We're going to remove two screws that secure that access panel to the front of the cabinet, and located on each corner. And again, they're typically a quarter inch hex head screw. And just pull that away at the bottom, and let it drop down. And we can set that aside. Now on this particular style of dryer, to remove the console or control panel, we need to release two plastic tabs that are located on either end of that control panel and they protrude through an opening in the metal frame. In removing that console, we need to make sure that we release both of these locking tabs and they actually fit right into that unpainted metal piece. So it's easier to just gently depress those with a screwdriver by pulling over from the front at the bottom. Once it slides into that opening, we can then rotate it out from the bottom at the front, and then we'll lift up across the top to disengage the tabs there. Be three tabs across the top. Engage these little notches. Once we've lifted it out of there, we can then rotate that around the console up and lay it on the top of the cabinet. Now this will expose screws that secure the front panel and door assembly to the dryer cabinet. So we'll next remove those. We'll also need to disconnect the door switch harness at the bottom here. We need to take a flat blade screwdriver and go in underneath the edge of that connector. Just pry upwards on it. Basically stretch the plastic a little bit. Do both sides. Just roll it over. We also need to remove that harness extension from this cable tie. There's a plastic clip with a catch right on the bottom of that. So with a flat blade screwdriver, we're just going under the edge of that and pop it out. I'll allow you to pull the harness out of the way. We'll next open the door up. And we're going to remove these two Phillips screws at the front. Now we can lift up on that front panel, lift it away from the cabinet, and we'll set that aside. Now our next step will be to disconnect this harness connector to the sensors. You can either pull the connector apart or simply pry off the two connectors on the ends of the sensors. And 
and come down to the blower housing and you'll find two screws in this location that secure that bottom of the inlet to the blower housing. Let's remove those. Now before we can go any further, it'll be easier if we remove the belt from the drum and the motor pulley. So we'll reach in through this opening with your left hand and then reach in across the heater housing and lower outlet. So you feel the belt and the idler pulley. And we're going to push that idler pulley to the left against the tension of the spring so we can release the belt from off of the idler pulley. Then next we'll remove the two screws at the bottom corners of that bulkhead and just loosen the top two. There are keyhole slots on those top two corners that will allow us to lift up on that panel and lift it out over top of the heads of the screws. We need to lift up slightly on the drum. Can remove that front bulkhead. Now we do suggest that you check both of these front roller shafts to make sure they're in good shape. And if you need to replace the one that is located on the right hand side, you'll need to remove that lower outlet duct. There are two quarter inch hex head screws that secure that to the bulkhead. Make sure you remove those. Out. And then just lift that off. Now that gives us access to the 916 hex head nuts that secure that shaft to the bulkhead. Now that we've exposed both of the drum rollers and determined which or both need to be replaced. Our next step will, will be to remove that little triangular shaped ring that secures the roller to the shaft. And to do that, we'll just take a small flat blade screwdriver and just take one side at a time so that we don't damage it. And if they're worn, you'll want to replace those as well. They need to be the exact dimension to snap into that groove. Lift our drum roller off, make sure there's no damage to the drum roller. If you've determined that you need to replace that shaft, we won't take that tri-ring off from the front because then we have to lift it over two of those screws and then more of a chance of damaging it. So we'll flip that over so that we can access the hex nut on the back. We're also going to need a pair of locking pliers and clamp that on the narrow portion on the front of that shaft. Take a 9 16 wrench, loosen the nut, remove it, and then we can drop the shaft off the front, remove the flat washer, but save it for the replacement shaft. We'll take our flat blade screwdriver and just gently lift that tri ring off. Discard the old shaft. Take the new one. Again, we'll just clamp the locking pliers on the very end of that shaft. And once we have that shaft locked onto the locking pliers, we'll take our tri ring and carefully snap that onto the shaft. Make sure that it fits into that groove and that it's secure. Take the flat washer, lay it on top of it, 
slide that through from the front of the bulkhead and then reinstall that retaining nut. Tighten it securely. We'll reinstall the drum roller. Make sure it spins easily. And reinstall the tri ring on the front. Verify that the opposite side is still in good shape. We'll replace it as well. Now if you choose to, you can put that lower duct assembly onto the front bulkhead before you install it, or you can simply install it the way it is. So we'll begin by tucking the top of it in behind that cross piece. And push the bottom into position, and we're going to lift the whole drum and the bulkhead up together, making sure that the drum rollers are engaged with the drum. And locate the two top keyhole slots under those two screws. Okay, make sure that the bulkhead is pressed firmly back into place and the drum rollers are sitting in that channel. And line up the two bottom screws. Reinstall those. Tighten the top ones. We'll take the lower housing. We we'll need to make sure that we tuck that inside of the cabinet first, and then rotate it up into position, and then reinstall the two screws. slide the mid cover back into position and then we'll take the two gold colored screws and secure the lower portion of that housing to the blower housing. Next we'll reattach the wire harness to the sensor bars and now we're ready to put the door panel front panel assembly on. Now when installing the front panel you may require some assistance to hold it in position. You need to line up the top corners with the screw holes. And then line up the bottom holes. And then tighten all four screws securely. And then open up that door and we'll reinstall those two felt screws. Tighten those securely and then close the door up. Now next we'll need to reconnect the harness for the door switch. So just line it up, press it firmly together until it locks in place. And take that harness and tuck it back into the little wire tie and just snap that and press it until it snaps firmly. And now we can put the lower access panel on. Now when reinstalling those two screws at the bottom of that access panel, you may find that you need to tilt the dryer back slightly, so you may need some assistance. We'll tuck the top of the panel in first. Make sure we hold it securely to the bottom of the front panel to help line up the screw hole. And tighten those securely. We can rotate the control panel back into position. Push that top over first. Sure that we line up those side tabs in the openings. Just 
across the top as far back as it'll go. Again, making sure that those side tabs are lined up and then just press them into place. You may need to give it a little bit of a bump. And now we have it locked in place. And now we can put the main top back on. Now when installing the top panel, you need to make sure that these two tabs that are towards the front will hook under these plastic tabs on that cross piece. So we're going to lay the top about a half an inch back on the back of the control panel. Make sure it lays flat. push it forward. Once we have it lined up and centered, make sure it engages those tabs. And it should fit right flush to the back of the console. And then we'll reinstall the two retaining screws at the back. Then we can push the dryer back into position and reconnect the vent if we've disconnected it. We're now ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete. Mm -hmm.